Good evening to those who have joined us for our weekly Bible study at St. James Common Presbyterian Church in America. St. James is located in the River City of Decatur, Alabama at 920 West Moulton Street. And we are the church that's preparing for the promised return of Christ. And so we've been dealing with the church. You know, we have all heard all of our lives about the church but sometimes I believe we just take it for granted. But it's, it, it's good for us every now and then to stop and examine what the church really is and what it really means to us and to the world that we're living in and to God. And so we've been studying uh, the church. And so we're going to continue this process today. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to have your word, Father, to correctly interpret your desire for this creation that you made, Father. And Lord, we realize, Father, that we are made out of sinful materials, sin passed down to us from Adam, Father. But Lord, you have placed your Holy Spirit inside of us, Father. So, Lord, we ask you to let him take full control today, Father, that we might discern and rightly divide your word, Father. Lord, you, you have a mission for us to accomplish. You told us to teach them to observe everything that you ever taught us. And then you promised that you'll be with us always to the end of the world, Father. So we seek your presence today. Open up the word to us, Father. Let it sink deep down into our hearts, Father, and have its desired effect on us and the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we've been dealing with the church uh, and we have to recognize that God always intended for his creation, mankind. We are the uh, height of what he created. He, he, he created this world for us to live in. And for us to have dominion over this world. But we got out of line because of sin. But God never gave up on us. He provided the patriots. He, 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 he worked through certain people to continue to work in the world and to make his presence known and his desires known for his people. People like uh, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, David, Moses, and all those different figures that we study about in the Word of God. He also made priests and prophets, uh, Isaiah, Daniel, uh, Jeremiah, e Ezekiel, and many others, Michael, and all the all them. But then the Bible saying the last day he he. Uh, showed himself through his son. And Jesus Christ is the one that shows us the fullness of what God is and what his, what his church should be about. So we're going to dig into that a little bit more. We sh we've A bit of review. We talked about the ecclesia, which means to call out from. <laughs> Those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ, those of us who the Holy Spirit has taken residence in, we're called out to be for a mission, to carry out the assignment that God gave to the church. We, we, we ought to be in the world, but not to be of the world. God has an evangelical purpose for everyone that's called by his name. Uh, he has reconciled us to his, himself through Jesus Christ, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We have to spread the good news. We are, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. We are called to proclaim those to the acceptable year of the Lord, uh, to bring to those who are in darkness into this marvelous light. So we are the ecclesia. We are the body of Christ. We are the ones that are called out. Yes, we are still among people. Yes, we still struggle with sin, but uh, everywhere we go, there should be a light there. We can't be just like everybody else. We've been called to live a different life. 
to to live. You know, God saved us. He He cleansed us, he cleansed our spirits. But for the rest of our lives, we have to bring our bodies and our souls in submission to what God did for us. He gave us righteousness, but we have to try not to be like those who have not been born again. We belong to God. So uh, we are the Ecclesia. But then also we looked at uh, the term Kurakon, which means that which belong to the Lord. And that's what I was talking about. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. Christ purchased us with his own blood. The Bible said God so loved the world. God gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, I mean, God, God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. Jesus Christ said, no man has taken my life. I'm laying it down. And if I lay my life down, I can pick it up again. So uh, we belong to him. Christ purchased us. And in a, when we do our holy communion, that's the Lord's Supper. He, he said, uh, this is my body which is given unto to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, he took the cup and said, this is my blood that's been shed for you. Drink all of it as in remembrance of me. So it's God's, we belong to him. And also, when John was on the Isle of Patmos, uh, on Sunday morning, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he said, I heard a voice from behind me. I'd, I'd been out there by myself, I thought. But then I heard a voice from behind me saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I'm he that lived and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. So he identified the time that the church met together as the Lord's day. So this tells me that the church is composed of a body of believers who have been called out of the world and who are under the, the dominion and the authority of Jesus Christ. We should want to please him. We should want to uh, word to know that we are a part of him and represent him because had it not been for him, we would all be in gross darkness on our way to hell. But he did everything necessary to uh, allow us to come back into a right relationship with God and and one day have a right to the tree of life. So then we looked at how, you know, God commissioned his disciples. He told them to go to Jerusalem and wait till you be endued with power. But then when the, when the Holy Spirit has come, I want you to be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the uttermost parts of the world. So, on the day of Pentecost, or well, before then, you know, they gathered together and, and the sum of them was about 120. They started off this new movement, uh, waited on the, on the power with about 120. But on the day of Pentecost, uh, they heard the sound of a rush and a mighty wind. And, it, and they saw cloven of to tongues of fire that was above their heads. And and they began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. They weren't speaking with, it, with something that was unknown because the people uh, heard them in their native tongues. And, and so uh, it was a mystery. And, they, and some, some accused them of being drunk. But then Peter stood up that day and he preached. And we're not drunk as you seem, but as it seems. But the prophet Joel said in the last day, God was going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, and he, he preached that day. And after he preached, their hearts were pricked. And they said, what must we do? And he said, if you believe. And, and so 5,000 were saved. Now, 3,000 were saved that day. And they continued in, in the apostles' doctrine. They were, they were uh, trying to learn as much as they could about God. <laughs> but then on another occasion, uh, when Peter and John were, were called in to the Sanhedrin court, uh, the Bible said that uh, 5,000 believed. They were, they were persecuted uh, for uh, standing up for God. 
And you recall how I said that he said, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in the uttermost parts of the world. Well, uh, they were gathered around Jerusalem, but then they started persecuting them for calling upon a dead, buried, and a risen Savior. And God, in this second stage, allowed the church to move from Jerusalem into different places. He called a persecutor of the church by the name of Paul. Uh, he met him on the road to Damascus, and, and uh, he commissioned him to be a uh, a, an apostle to the Gentiles. And then he also let persecution cause uh, the disciples uh, to move into other areas. Philip uh, met a, 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 a eunuch from Ethiopia and he was reading about Isaiah and he asked him, who was he talking about? Was he talking about himself or someone else? And Philip got into his chariot and he got to explain it to him. And he saw water and said, this is water. What prohibits me from being baptized? And he said, if you believe, not anything. So the church was moving. The church was spreading like God intended it. We have to realize, you know, today we can get confused by these various denominations and these various churches within these denominations. And, and we get to thinking that it's a social club. It's my church. Uh, uh, we got members and we got privileges because we, we pay our money here and, and, and we support this church. But we have to realize that the church belongs to God. Jesus said, on this rock, I'll build my church. So the church is universal. The complete body of Christ existed in every place. It doesn't matter whether you're uh, Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist, Adventist, Church of Christ, Church of God in Christ, all these other different sects. Uh, we're going to leave those titles here. Uh, we, I pastor St. James. I, I once pastored Mount Sinai. I came from Blackburn Chapel. I, I've been in Mackens Chapel. Well, those are just names of different places, the different parts of the church. But the church is universal. Uh, it's more than that place where you assemble. It's more than that uh, part, that sect that you belong to, that denomination that you belong to. It's universal. Everyone that's been born again is a part of the body of Christ. And and so we cannot allow ourselves to be just so uh, regimented in the one place. We can't make ourselves think that we, be, we own anything. We are a part of the body of Christ. But then there is a local church, uh, the place where different people gather. And we do need to be a part of a local church. Uh, God intends for us to have a horizontal uh, relationship uh, and a vertical relationship. We should have one with him and we should have one with our fellow human beings. And we need to gather together. We need to hear the word together. We need to study together. We need to uh, uh, encourage one another. Uh, then we need to get together and, and do the mission that God has given us. So the local church is important. Uh, it was started even from the beginning. Uh, Paul talked about the various churches that he went and ministered to, and he wrote letters to them. And so we have to recognize that even though the church is universal, uh, every person that's been saved cannot, uh, they're not in one place. And they can't get all gather in one place. So it's important for us to have a, a relationship. We ought to be a family. We ought to be a part of a local church. But then uh, in the Bible, they had certain single meetings where two or three were gathered together and, and they were studying the word of God and they were agreeing. He said, if any two of you agree here on earth concerning anything, you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. 
So the church is really the church is anywhere where we are. Even on your job, it's not that you're going to be studying the word of God, not that you're going to be uh, teaching Bible class, but wherever we are, the church should be there. He said, you are the salt of the earth. You are a city that sets up on a hill that cannot be hidden. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify my Father which is in heaven. So we ought to be able to uh, live a life to where people will know without you telling them, without you having a big chain around your neck that you are a child of God. That's what, it, that's what the church is supposed to be. We're supposed to be making a difference in the world. I know that you think that you're unimportant and, and just because you're not on a stage or just because you can't sing like an angel, but God wants to use everyone that he has saved. He wants to work through us. We are his body. We are his hands. We are his mouth. We are his resources. He, he put gifts and talents in every one of us. And it's to evangelize this world that we live in. So that's our review. Today we want to look at the kingdom. You know, the church has been described as the kingdom. Sometimes it's the kingdom of heaven. Sometimes it's the kingdom of God. But the church is described as, a, as the kingdom. And we have to realize that we are citizens of a kingdom that's not of this world. The, the kingdom is in the world, but it's not of the world. Uh, yes, we are uh, uh, citizens in the United States, some are in other countries. We are citizens in the various states that we are a part of and the various cities and, and towns that we belong to. But we have to recognize those of us who have been saved are a part of a kingdom that is not of this world. Uh, broadly speaking, the kingdom of God is, to, is God's rule of an eternal, and it's, it's God's rule, it's the rule of an eternal sovereign God over all the universe. Uh, so whether we know it or not, God is still in control. I know sometimes it seems like the world is out of control and this is the kingdom of Satan, but that's not true. God still has a sovereign rule over his creation. Uh, he, he is able to do anything he wants to. Nebuchadnezzar found out uh, when God caused him to go into the wilderness and, and grew, grew hair like feathers and, and he really lost his mind because he stood up and he tried to proclaim that it's not just the great Babylon in whom I have ruled with my own hand. He had already been warned, but he didn't believe. He got so proud until God uh, brought him down. And once he gave him his mind back, he admitted that there is no kingdom that's above God's kingdom. He said the king, his kingdom is an eternal kingdom. That's what he said in Daniel 4 and 3. But then when we narrow it down a little bit further, the kingdom of God is a spiritual rule over the hearts and the lives of those who are willing to submit to God's authority. That's what we should be as Christians. We have to realize that our human intelligence, our human wisdom is very limited. Our human power is very limited. But God has given us a chance to uh, work with him and be effective. God is doing a work in this world, whether we know it or not. Uh, and those of us who submit to him, those of us who are willing to come under his authority, he will work with us. Those who defy his authority, those who refuse to submit to him, but they're not a part of the kingdom. Uh, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Uh, his, he had a, he had, we had a, 
his kingdom is not an earthly kingdom, but it's a it's a an eternal kingdom, even though it's working in this world, but it's not of this world. They had all kind of kings. They had all kind of rulers during the time that when Christ was here. And uh, they were trying to have him crucified because he claimed to be the king. Uh, and they wanted to find a charge to get uh, the authorities against Christ so that they could crucify him. And when he was tried, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. I am a king. And and Pilate wanted to let him go then, but they wanted him crucified. So uh, we have to realize that uh, Christ's kingdom is still in effect. And those of us who have submitted to him, those of us who surrendered our lives to him, and it's more than being a born again. We have to yield ourselves to it. We have to be subject to our king. You can be saved, but then be ineffective. But we need to be operating in the kingdom. His kingdom supersedes rules and authority. His kingdom is more powerful than any rule that's on this earth. And when we are operating in his kingdom, God is doing a mighty work. And I ask, often ask him, let me be a part of what you're doing. You're the one that saves. You're the one that redeems. You're the one that heals. You are the one that's able to do anything but fail. We are made out of failing materials. We, we will fail if we depend on our own understanding. But the Bible says, in all our ways, we need to acknowledge him and lean not to our own understanding. And we'll acknowledge him. He'll direct our paths. So we ought to operate in the kingdom. Don't depend on, I mean, it's good to get learned and it's good to, to learn as much as we can, but we have to uh, realize that wisdom comes from God. God is able to help you to use the, the information that you've gained in higher education and you can use it for his glory. We should want to get that intelligence. We should want to learn as much as we can learn so that we can use it to better evangelize this world. So the kingdom of God uh, can be equated in the spirit of salvation. And that's the evidence that we've been saved. You know, it's, it's easy to join the church uh, and put our name on the road, but to be a part of the kingdom, we must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus, he came to him by night. He, was a, he said, we know that you are a ruler. Uh, we know that, 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 that you are a, a prophet. We know that you are a teacher sent from God. Uh, but Jesus told him, I assure you that no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say to you that you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you hear the wind, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. So we have to realize that we uh, being born again means to be regenerated. We were generated in sin. Uh, that, David said he was conceived in sin. He was shapen in iniquity. So uh, when Adam sinned, sin passed down to us. We all develop a sin nature. You don't have to teach a baby how to sin. Tell them what not to do. And, they, and if you turn your back, they're going to try to do it because that's that endemic nature. But once we come to Christ, once we are, are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, then we become re generated. We were generated in sin, but we become regenerated. And so we get the nature of our Father God. Yes, we still battle that there's a war going on. This sinful flesh is worn against the spirit, but you've been saved. You've been regenerated. You become a child of God. Uh, we are part of the second item, Jesus Christ. And so We've been born again. We are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Nicodemus said, how can these things be? And he, Jesus said, you are, you are a respected Jews teacher, yet you don't understand these things. So it's a mystery uh, that we must be born again. And if you've really been born again, you have to realize that the Holy Spirit lives in us. And we are being regenerated. We are being, every day we are being called out. We are being separated. We are being sanctified. Uh, we are being, being brought into submission and brought into the, to, uh, being more like Christ. And that process will go on until we finally close our eyes to this world. Then we will be saved from the very presence of, of sin. When we get saved, we get saved from the penalty of sin. Jesus took that price for us. And we, when we accept him, that blood is applied to us. And we don't have to go to hell for our sin. Christ took that punishment. But now the Holy Spirit is in the process of saving us from the power of sin. As we walk with God, we ought to be more and more like Christ every day of our lives. As we study his word, as we grow in, in, into this thing and get stronger, uh, we are being saved from the power of sin. Some of the things that we used to do last year, we should be getting rid of them this year. If we, if we will allow the Holy Spirit to have power in our lives and yield ourselves to him, we should be drawing closer and closer to him. But then once we leave this existence, once we uh, uh, cross over, then we'll be saved from the very power of sin, very presence of sin. Satan can have no more authority. Temptation can no longer affect us. So we have been saved, we're being saved, and we will be saved. And that's all a part of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. God wants us to be a part of him. Uh, and he wants us to be in his family, in his kingdom. We are the children of God. We are in the kingdom of God. God is our father, and, and he takes special pride in his children. And he wants to use us to carry out his mission. Let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We have to realize that we have a purpose. You may not be called to preach. You may not be called to teach, but you are called to carry the good news. You are called to live a holy lifestyle so that people will be called out of darkness, that they will see uh, God through our lives. We have a purpose. We have a mission, and it's given to us by God. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to fulfill my calling. I want to do everything that God has assigned to my hand to do. And part of that is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to spread the good news. I'm trying to turn on the light. Sometimes we can get love to sleep by Satan because he does not want God to be effective. He can make us feel like we're weak. He can make us lose sight on what God would have for us to be doing. And it's my job to prepare the saints for the work of ministry, to build up the body. So we need to strengthen ourselves so that we can go out and and uh, be the call uh, call, we fill out the calling that God has on our lives, and that's to show people that are lost. And God knows we have many people who are lost still in the world right now. God needs a strong church to let them know that God is still willing to save them. They can't sink so low. They can't get so far away from God to where the word can't reach them if they open their hearts. And by way of announcements, we're going to continue to minister through this pandemic as God give us the grace to do so. Uh, we are back in our building, and on Sunday morning at 9.45, we have Sunday school. You're welcome to come into the building, but let's continue to safely uh, 
socially distance and wear a mask so that we don't let this pandemic take control of us. We want to take care of our physical body and also our spiritual bodies. Uh, and it, that Sunday school lesson is uploaded for those who cannot be a part of our presence in our building. You can get it online uh, at our website and on YouTube. Same thing with our morning worship at 11 a.m. We're back in the building. But And, and if you can't get there, you can still uh, hear the word of God. You can still be a part of the worship. It's best for us to be together, but we have to take care of our bodies too. And every Wednesday, a Bible class will be uploaded on our website and on YouTube. Uh, many people are, are posting them on Facebook, and you're welcome to post them on any social media uh, that you are a part of, uh, that you can get the word out. That can be part of your mission, is spreading our Sunday school, spreading our morning worship, spreading the Bible class in the, in the places of your influence. So let God use you in the, the areas that he can use you. Seek him and let him uh, show you what he wants you to do. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we ask you to continue, Father, to let me be a vessel that you can use. Lord, you teach me as I teach others, Father, that we all might get stronger in this mission and be effective, Father. There are many who have lost hope, Father. Many of our children are struggling and they're going in different directions, Father. But I know they can't get too far away from you that your Holy Spirit cannot touch them, Father. So we're praying, Father, that you will allow your people to be about your business, Father. So the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. So let us go in and get in this harvest, Lord. Give us the wisdom that we need to continue your, the work that you started. And Lord, we're praying for those who have lost hope, those who are sick, Father, those who have lost their jobs, those who have lost loved ones, Father. And Lord, whatever state they're in, Lord, we ask you, Father, to help your church, Father, to do the things that you've called us to do, Father. And we'd be careful to give you the praise, glory, and honor that you deserve because we realize it's in you that we live, we move, and we have our being. We pray this prayer in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God richly bless and keep you.